Right? <laughs> Everybody doing good today? Yes. Isn't it good to be in church? Yes. Love the Lord. Everybody love the Lord in here today? Yes. Well, then you've already done the first commandment right there. First and greatest. Do you love others? Then yes. we've made it right there. We've already been to church right there. We just preach the good news. Amen? Because we love the Lord our God. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's uh, open our Bibles to the book of James. Let's look at the Word today. Let's pray over it before we do. Father God, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for every good thing that it's done in our lives, in the lives of those that are around us, that it's done through our lives, Lord. And we ask for utterance today, that it be the very Word of God, that it not be the words of man, not just an idea or an opinion, but the truth that sets us free. And Lord, we, we ask for Your help and we ask for ears to hear it, a heart to receive it, Lord. And we thank you in advance for the changes that it will make, that we will never be the same again from this day forward. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Well, last week, uh, or what was it? It wasn't last week. A couple weeks ago, we were talking about uh, wisdom and temptation and patience. Talk to anybody remember that? Anybody was here? The Lord was helping us. I should have. I still got to get the CD or the DVD because I ain't heard it yet. But it was good while we were doing it because the Lord was helping us. And we knew it was the Lord. You could tell it was the Lord because it was coming out the way He wanted it to come out. And so we're going to continue a little bit along those tracks, uh, looking at James 1 and uh, looking at the, this uh, temptation. You know, temptation is not an uh, opportunity to fail. Temptation is an opportunity to succeed. Yes. Amen? It, he talks about temptation coming to everyone. You know, a lot of people try to avoid temptation. Well, you can try all you want, but it's in you. Right? And uh, so it's going to come. He says it's going to come. Temptation is going to come. <laughs> That's not the good news. The good news is you're going to overcome it. Right? We're here to preach the good news. The good news is temptation's coming and it's already defeated. Amen? So we're fe everything we face, we face, it's, it's a defeated foe. We're not facing anything that Jesus hasn't already defeated for us. So we're not looking to see if we're going to win. It's just a question of when and how. Right? It's not, it's not will we beat him up, it's how bad will we beat him up. <laughs> Amen? Because he will be beaten before we're done. Thank you, Lord. In uh, James 1.1, 1, 1, it says, it's kind of where we started last week, it says, uh, look at it in the NIV, James 1.1. 1, 1. Okay, James 1.2. I was close. I was right there. Consider it pure joy. Wow. That James, he was messing with people that day, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to consider it pure joy when you're facing all kinds of trials. All kinds of temptations, I want you to laugh, okay? I want you to be happy, is what he's saying. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. In other words, you don't even, don't even look at it and, and flinch. Laugh. He's, he's saying be happy. Pure joy. How many of you have, have, have that and, you know, that's just your first reaction to temptations and trials? Pure joy. You wake up, you don't feel good one morning, and you just say, whoa, I don't feel good. Here we go. <laughs> and you know, that's what he's saying. Paul called sickness a temptation. He called uh, weakness in his flesh a temptation. What was it a temptation to do? Well, for him, it would have been a temptation not to preach where he was preaching. You could, you could lay in bed and miss out on what God had for you to do that day. You know, every trial is a temptation to get us to do something other than what God had planned for us. Right? That's a temptation. And uh, we're, not, uh, we're not likely to do that. We're going to consider it pure joy knowing in advance that we're overcomers. Right? That's why he said consider it pure joy because you've already got the answer. Consider it pure joy. Why? Because not only do you have the answer... Everything you're going through, Jesus has already went through before you and overcome it for you. Amen? So it doesn't matter what the temptation is. You have something greater in you to overcome it. Amen? So you can consider it. That's what, you know, what it's saying, Job, at famine and destruction, thou shalt laugh. 
You know, when somebody says you ain't going to make it, you just laugh. When it looks at its worst and says, no one's ever come through this. So yeah, Jesus came through it and because He did, I am. That's right. Amen? That, that we're, not, we're not fighting a losing battle, we're fighting a winning battle. And, and that's, the, that's where we have to renew our mind. When we go in, we have to go in with the understanding we cannot lose. It is not possible. Amen? I mean, who wants to go? I mean, a lot of people want to go in with a 50-50 chance. You know, they go into something, they say, well, it might come out, it might not. We're going in with a 100% chance. We're coming out on the other side victorious. Not a 50-50 chance, 100% chance if you will stay the course, if you'll stay with what God says, not, not fall to the temptation, you will overcome. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Look at 1 Corinthians, somewhere in 1 Corinthians, maybe 2 Corinthians, somewhere in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 10-13. This is what temptations are to us. It says, No temptation has seized you except what's common to man. Well, if something seizes you that's common to man, it's not common to you because you're not a common man. <laughs> right? You're a son of God. Son of, sons and daughters of God are not common men. This may tempt a common man, but an uncommon man a man that's been bought with the blood of Jesus, a man that's been redeemed by, by Jesus Christ, a man that's been healed by the stripes on his back, a man that's been made prosperous because he made me prosperous, a man that has had all things given to him by God through the Holy Ghost, a man that has love in his heart given to him by God. It's the love of God. What chance does a common temptation have against that? What, what chance does a common temptation have against the love of God? None. The love of God's never failed. It's never failed and it's never going to. We are not common. It doesn't matter what the temptation is. It doesn't matter what you're coming up against. You're not common. People say, well, you know, everybody gets a cold. Everybody gets sick every now and then. No, we don't have to. We're not common. People even say, so that's, that's really odd. And say, exactly, we're not common. We're uncommon. Right? Common people accept things. They say, well, it's just common. Right? <laughs> they do. When you're uncommon, you refuse to accept things that are common. That's what makes you uncommon. Right? People even say it about you. They'll say, ah, oh, those people are really uncommon. <laughs> we'll say, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm uncommonly well, I'm uncommonly whole, I'm uncommonly prosperous, I'm uncommonly saved, and I'm uncommonly on my way to heaven, I'm uncommonly full of the love of God, and I can love you uncommonly. I don't want some common love, I want some uncommon love. I want some of the kind that don't ever fail me, that will never fail you, and doesn't quit on people. Amen? I'm not common, you ain't common, and we ain't going to be common. Amen? He says, no temptation has seized you except what's common. And then he says the very words you need to hear. God is faithful. What's he saying? Doesn't matter what's coming against you. God's faithful. Every time something comes against us, that's, that should be our reaction. That is a winner's reaction. You have immediately won when that's your next reaction. It doesn't matter what you're being tempted with or tempted by. Your next word is, God's faithful. I've never, he's never let me down before. He's never let anyone down before, and He's not going to let me down. And what's that literally saying? And love is faithful. God is love. And it says, and love is faithful. It <laughs> Sure it is. It's never failed. That's as faithful as you can get. Love is faithful, and, and He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And people say, yeah, I can only bear so much. No, He's not going to let you. He'll give you strength 
to bear everything. That's, if people say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm weak. I can't bear too much. Well, then get under His because He's faithful and He'll let you bear up under a whole bunch of things. He's not looking for what you can't overcome. He's looking to give you the grace to overcome all things. You know, people read these verses with the wrong vision. And they're saying, yeah, thank God He won't give me any more than I can bear. What is he saying? He's saying, I'll give you stuff to make you be able to bear stuff. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Common stuff? Phew, that won't be anything. He won't let you be tempted. But when you are tempted, he'll make a way that you can stand up under it. The King James says he'll provide a way of escape. Amen. We know by last time I preached that one of those major ways of escape is wisdom. Yes. Godly wisdom. Amen? How many know sometimes godly wisdom is just to stay put? Right? Hey, a lot of people, the minute something happens, they start running around all crazy. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I don't know what to do. I don't... It's a temptation. Sit still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen? Remember this verse. It's common to man. I'm not common. And God is faithful. When temptations hit our life, they've run into the dead end. This is where they now end. They become a were temptation, no longer an our temptation. Amen? You know, we can be tempted to be sad. We can be tempted to be angry. We can be tempted to be offended. If you don't take any of those temptations and you stay with God's Word, how many know God's got a plan? God's got a word. And when God speaks and we do things the way God says, then the temptation has no power over us because the temptation was to get us out of God's will, not, not try to bug us while we're in it. He can't do anything in God's will. He needs you out of God's will before He can mess with you. Right? You know, a lot of people, they think, well, he, he can just mess with you all the time. He can't mess with you any time that you don't want Him to. You're not common. The devil has no authority over us, and the things of this world have no power in us. And, and they, we, we, we don't have to just go around being hindered all day long by the thoughts and actions of the enemy. The only way we can be hindered by those things is when we give them power. That's why he's trying to get us tempted to go another way, because now we give his direction power. We've given it authority in our life. How many know He has a direction that He'd like you to go and it ain't God's direction? Right? He'd like you to come to church and say, well, I'm in church. I've done my duty. Once I leave here, I'll be good and not get anything out of it. <laughs> How many know it wouldn't matter if there was a donkey up here talking if God put him up here and you would listen? you get something out of it. Amen. Maybe a donkey that has better English than me too. <laughs> How many know if we set our heart to hear the things of God, amen, that we will hear them no matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing. If we stay within His will, you will hear from God and you'll know the direction to go. You'll always know godly wisdom and you'll follow it. Amen? He's got a wisdom for all things, and he's, got, he's made a way of escape. What's his way of escape? There's many ways, but it'll always involve his wisdom. It'll always involve the word of truth. It'll always involve going his direction. Most of the time, it's just stay in the course, right? Because his plan was here before any other plan. So what's he trying to do? He's trying to get us off the plan. How does he get Christians off the plan? Go back to James. The number one way he gets Christians off the plan starts in, in uh, verse 13. James 1.13. 1, 1.13. 1, this is who we are right here, verse 1. Yeah. In 13, this is, he says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. You know, no, too many people attributing two directions to God. In other words... They're attributing an evil way and a good way to God. And if they get on a path, they say, well, this must be what God wanted to happen because this is what happened. 
what do they attribute? They're saying they, they went that direction because God told them to and something bad happened. <laughs> right? No, you guys don't like that? That's the truth. Many people are saying no matter what their situation is, they're going to blame God. They're going to say, I'm in, uh, you know, I, this, is what, this is what God has for me. This is what He has for me to do. You know, so many times we should question how we got there. Right? Rather than why, it's, why what is happening is happening. How did we get to why what is happening? Amen? I'm not, you know, and sometimes the devil gets won over, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that he's won. Right? People who trip only lose if they never get up. Right? <laughs> if you trip and fall, the only way that you'll, you won't get to where you're going is if you say, oh, I tripped and fall. I'll never get up now. How can I make it if I trip and fall? Get up. I mean, what, what if you had a kid, they're one year old, and it's time for them to learn how to walk, and they, the first time they don't, they don't make it, you say, oh, you'll never walk. I showed you how for the last year. I've been walking around you. You've watched my feet, one foot in front of the other, and you're still not walking. And I let you try one time, and you're, you'll never walk. <laughs> no. Why don't, why don't you do that? Because you know they'll walk. You have faith and full confidence that if they continue to try, they will walk. God has greater confidence in us than that. He knows that if He can get you up and He can keep you going, you will make it. No matter what you've been through, no matter where you've been, no matter how many wrong turns you made, He'll pull you back over on the road and say, go this way. Amen? We serve a good God. If you've given over to a temptation, come back over to His way. Don't get over in condemnation and say, oh, I, I, just keep going in condom I just keep going in temptation every time. I, you know, every time I see a cake, I eat the whole thing. <laughs> it was probably time to run. <laughs> you know, the, the other day, Kim said, what kind of cookies do you want me to make? And I said, you better not make any. I said, because if you do, I'm going to eat ten. I can tell you right now. So let's just keep that temptation away. <laughs> That's godly wisdom. <laughs> then I said, and besides that, we'll have some left. I'll eat them every night of the week. <laughs> How many know it wasn't the cookie that was the temptation? Huh? It, it was putting the cookie in my face. Me, me giving over to the lust for the cookie. I know you guys don't lust after cookies. <laughs> that, that should tell us something about broccoli right there. <laughs> I mean, you ever seen somebody sit there and look at broccoli and go, I can just barely keep away from that stalk of broccoli. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever doing that. All right, back on track. <laughs> I'm a simple man, I told you that. <laughs> when you're tempted, God is not the one tempting you. He'll, he's the one that will bring us back. He's the one that will pull us back where we're supposed to be and keep us on the track that He's put us on. If we blame Him for tempting us, we have no avenue of return. Amen? So the devil wants you to blame God for tempting you because that takes away your return avenue. Right? If God's the one tempting you, you ain't coming out of it and you ain't overcoming it. Huh? But He's not because He doesn't tempt anyone with evil, neither can He be tempted. So we've got some godly wisdom right there. First rule of, of overcoming temptation, never blame God. Stay on God's side. God is never your problem and always your answer. And He's an uncommon answer. So it doesn't matter what's common to man, you have an uncommon answer. Glory to God. I don't want a common answer. I want an answer that works. Right? 
Remember we talked about it? What if he tells you to go dip in the Jordan River seven times? That's an uncommon answer to, to healing leprosy, isn't it? I don't imagine anybody had ever heard that in that day and time. And I bet you they haven't heard it in this day and time. If you went to have something healed from a doctor and he said, well, go down to the Taney Como, <laughs> dip about seven times and come back. Somebody had to convince Naaman that that was the word of the Lord, right? Why? Because it was an uncommon answer. God doesn't do things that are common. Why? Because He's eternal. He knows what will fix things, and He knows the course. The devil is trying to get you off the course. Amen? God's never our problem. He's always our answer. Be ready to accept His answer. Amen? You've got to get your heart ready to accept His answer. He'll tell you to give your car away when you've got to drive five miles to work or walk five miles to work. <laughs> He'll say, but God, I'll have to walk then. He'll say, and that's, that's when it comes to, do you trust me? See, temptation is an issue of trust. Do you trust that God can get you from A to B no matter how He tells you to get there? Amen? Or do you need another vehicle to get you to where God told you to go? See, because what we're doing is we're trying to still get where God told us to go, but use other arrangements. Right? I want to be prosperous, so what I'll do is I'll go out and get as many credit cards as I can, because then I can buy all the stuff I want. <laughs> Bad idea. Done it. They make you pay them back. <laughs> And they make it sound so good before that. Like you'll have all this freedom. Get this card and you'll have freedom to buy everything until you limit it out and they want to be paid. <laughs> Temptation is bondage. God's way is freedom. It's the free way. Glory to God. He's not tempting people. He's helping people. How are people tempted? Verse 14, it says, every man. How many men? Is there somebody in here that didn't want to be tempted? Well, I don't want to be, but you're going to be. Tempted is not a bad thing. It's, fa it's patience exerciser. That's all temptation is. Right? We read about it last week. All, all, all that temptation is, is a chance to exercise your patience. Why? You know that God's already got your back. You don't need another direction just because something new comes at you. God already knew that was coming before it got there, and He'd already made a way of escape before it came. He's not figuring out your life as you go. You know, most people think, think the next step they take, God's, God's having to make a new plan. God is not making a new plan. He's not, he's not looking to figure out your life. He knows the plan for your life. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Yes. An expected end. Glory to God. He's not, he's not waiting to see what you do next. To, to, this isn't a chess game. He's not looking to see where you move to decide what He does. He's already decided and He's already won. Between Him and the devil, checkmate. Yep, yep. Right? Thought I didn't know about anything about chess, didn't you? Well, I know checkmate. That's about it. <laughs> Every man is, draw, is, is tempted when he's drawn away. What's it, what is he? Drawn away. Drawn away. What are you doing? You're drawn away from God's plan. Drawn away from God's way. Drawn away from God's word. Drawn away. Every man is tempted when they're drawn away. Why? Because that's whom he may devour. When the sheep is drawn away from the flock, that's who, that's who the lion's going for. He ain't coming for the whole flock. He's going for the one that's sitting out there by themselves. Right? You know, you got Christians out there today. They've gotten offended and they've gotten drawn away from the church. They've gotten drawn away from the people that God called them to. They're drawn away and they're wondering why things aren't going well in their life. And it's because they're drawn away. 
You say, well, we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, you got offended. Offense is the temptation to be drawn away. What did it do? It drew you away. Well, then it must be bad. Amen? If you got offended for any reason, stop. I don't care who you're offended at. Get over it now. Forgive me if I'm the one that did it, okay? Anybody in here, if I offended you, forgive me. Because I don't want you offended. You know why I don't want you offended? Because I love you, and I know God's path is best for you, and you can't be offended and on God's path. The two don't match. They're completely contrary. Offense is of the flesh, not of the Spirit. Amen? We cannot walk in offense and have God's best. Because you can't be in His path. You can't be in the way of wisdom. And you won't overcome the next temptation. That's just the first thing. He just wanted you drawn away. The offense drew you away. Right? Because people never say, if you ever ask people why they leave somewhere, they never say, well, because I was offended. They never say that. <laughs> oh, God's calling us away to teach at another venue. Really, all of a sudden, right after you got offended. So weird. <laughs> you know, every time I'm offended, He doesn't want me teaching anything. It's the oddest deal. In fact is, when I'm studying, He says, clear your heart, make sure. What's He say? If you're praying and you have ought against somebody, forgive them. Why? Because your prayer ain't going nowhere. <laughs> right? I don't want people offended. Trust me, if I say something that offends you, I didn't mean to. But I am a man. I'm likely to say something that didn't communicate right sometimes. Not here, because this is under the anointing of God. We're going to say it right. Amen. We're believing God for utterance, not me. That's right. Amen. Amen? Amen? We serve a good God. Offense is not of God. We should not have offense within this body. And if you know somebody that's left because they were offended, if you know they were offended with you, go to them. Don't wait for, well, if they'll, they're offended, they can come back to me. I didn't do nothing wrong. Now you did. <laughs> you didn't walk in love. Love would not let them go off. Love would not let them be drawn away out by themselves where the wolf can get them. Amen? Amen. Love would, put, would pull them back in by whatever means necessary. Hmm. It's good stuff. I'll add it to my notes later. God's good to us. He knows the things that affect us in our, in our personal lives. And these are the things that affect us. The devil tries to get us offended by something that somebody says, by the way they do it. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the way they hold their mouth when they say this. You know what, Dave? I just don't like the way he makes up new words. That's, that's just an offense. And, and you know what? If I, if I knew that it would keep you away from God, I'd quit making up new words. But it's not the new words that are doing it. It's the offense you're allowing in. Amen? What if somebody else likes the new word, the different words? And, huh? <laughs> okay. Forget all that. <laughs> Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust of his own desires. When somebody's drawn away by what they want, the way they wanted it, to do it their way. Amen? Look at uh, 2 Samuel 11. 2 Samuel 11. David. We know King David, right? Yeah. 2 Samuel 11, 1. King David. He was... Uh, well, here's what he was supposed to do. It came to pass... After a year was expired at the time when kings go forth into battle, David was on his way to battle. Well, that's not what it says. He's the king, right? And it says kings go forth to battle. Huh. You'd think if the kings were going forth to battle that David would have been going, not staying. Sometimes we want to stay when we're supposed to go. And how many know if you're supposed to go, and you stay, you're now in a bad place. Yeah, but I didn't feel good, really. You know, I've been, been in a lot of battles lately. 
you know, I've been doing good, but I'm just tired. Need some me time. Need, need a little me time. You know, this, this, this king stuff ain't so easy, you know. So I'm the king. I'll send Joab. I'll send Joab. I'll stick around the house for a while. Mistake. Mistake. Why? Because you're not where God wants you at that point. You're not where you're supposed to be. How many know when you're not where you're supposed to be, that means you're drawn away and you're where you're not supposed to be and now you are fair game for the lion. Right? Because he's seeking whom he may devour. And you're really hard to see when you're in the pack and when you're where you're supposed to be, but you get out there on your own. Right? So, you know, a lot of people that say, hey, yeah, that Bathsheba, that was a bad deal. He lusted after her. No, he lusted to stay home instead of go. See, people make this lust thing way bigger than it is. This started with not going where he was supposed to be. That's why offense is so bad in the church. It'll take you away from where you're supposed to be. And even if you go somewhere else, you're just taking your offense there. Go somewhere else, but get unoffended first. Go to church. Get in with God. Amen? But be where you're supposed to be. Amen? Why was it important for David to be where the kings were? Because he wouldn't have been on the rooftop. He wouldn't have seen what he saw. Right? He saw something. What? A, some, i got to have that. It's kind of like me and a little Debbie. <laughs> you know? If I wouldn't have went to the closet, wouldn't have saw it. Me and that little girl had to have a war. Little Debbie. She's a mean lady. <laughs> mean lady. Stay out of the closet. It's not where you're supposed to be. That's where the little Debbies are in our house, by the way. <laughs> when I was growing up, my mom had a little Debbie drawer. It was a fine place. Yeah. Everybody says you need some comfort food? Me and little Debbie. <laughs> he wouldn't have been on the rooftop because he'd have been where he's supposed to be. Therefore, the temptation that overtook him would have never had a chance. Amen? The temptation didn't start on the rooftop. The temptation started before he ever went to the rooftop. See, that's what we have to realize. The devil is subtle. He's not looking. He's, he's, he's not, he's not going to come throw some big grenade and you're going to see an explosion and say, Oh, he's trying to get me. I caught that. No, he's going to try and slip in through your... He has to slip in through your lust. We're drawn away by our own lust. When we, when we, when we give in, not... not it's, again, not the, not the Lord. Not even the devil. Your own lust. Everybody has them. It's, it's a desire other than God's way. We think we, we think we can do it without Him. Anybody ever done that? I mean, it's, David was so hooked with God that the Philistines came against him. And he said, Lord, shall we go and shall we defeat him? And he said, yes, do it this way. And not very, just a few verses later, they come back. And David's so hooked with God, he doesn't say, let's go the same way we went last time. That's the way to do it. We beat them last time that way. We'll beat them this way. He immediately inquires of the Lord again. Why would he not inquire right now? When we inquire of the Lord, we want His way. We want His best. We want to go His direction. When we quit inquiring, <laughs> even, if it, even if it's because we've done it this way before. You know, the Lord, He always did it this way with me before. Well, did you ask Him if He was going to do it a different way this time? What's unchanging about God is His results. They always win. Not the way He gets them. Right? <laughs> Amen? How many know? One time he said, march around the wall. 
I mean, you're marching around a wall and shouting. And you're like, what? That's godly wisdom. When God tells you to march around a wall and shout, you better march around a wall and shout. But if you get in your head, you'll say, what? You know, I happen to know the only way to get a wall down is to start taking apart block by block or get some dynamite. You, you, you can come up with all your temptations to do it another way that will never work and will leave you wanting, unsatisfied, and never fixed. Or you can march around the wall seven times and shout and watch it fall down. Amen? Godly wisdom is right wisdom. Our way is not going to produce His results. You want God's results? Quit going your way. Amen? I mean, not y'all. Y'all go God's way all the time. I'm talking to me, and you guys get to learn while I'm talking to me. Every now and then, it's go, Dad, I'll be going like this. God will just have to pull me back in. You guys never do that, right? You know, sometimes the Moors will tell us to do something. I know I talked a little bit about this last week. And, we'll, and, and my mind will immediately think, that can't be done. And do you know what I'm literally saying? That God told them something that can't be done. How stupid did I just sound? <laughs> if God told them to have us do it, then it doesn't matter if we have bailing wire and duct tape. It will work. And that's how we should go into anything God tells us to do. We should trust Him that He knows best and He's never failed. Why would we trust us? We're proven failures. <laughs> I am a proven failure and because of Jesus Christ, I am now a proven success. Amen? But, with, but on my own, I have proven that I can fail very well. I can do awful with the best of them. <laughs> Why would I not hook my wagon to a complete and utter winner? A victorious God who's never lost and cannot fail. And trust Him with my whole life. With everything that's within me. When He says, this is the way you do it, this is the way you do it. Amen? Amen? This temptation stuff can be overcome. But the devil's not going to just quit as long as you'll listen. <laughs> right? Look at, look, at, uh, look at Adam and Eve. Let's go to Genesis 2. Adam and Eve. Adam, man, God makes him. Says, you know what? I want a nice place for you. I'm going to put you right in the middle of the Garden of Eden. Work it. Make it pretty. A little scary to talk about. Did lawn work. <laughs> Did it for God, though. I guess that was okay. God said, you know what? This is a beautiful place. He said, everything you see here, yours. Take care of it. This is your place. Uh, verse, uh, Genesis 2, verse 9. He says, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight. In other words, he said, everything you see is going to look good and it's going to taste good. Every tree. He said, I'm making you a garden. And everything you see is going to be pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both those trees were there. Huh. Interesting. Two trees there in the midst of all these trees that are good for food and pretty. Huh. Go down to verse uh, 16. God put him in the middle here and then he said, Then the Lord God commanded Adam saying, Every tree of the garden you can eat freely. Every tree of the garden you can eat of freely. Just freely eat it. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat that one. Don't eat that one. Is this God, this, see, this is where people say, I wonder why he put it there, just tempted them. 
God doesn't tempt people. So it wasn't there just to tempt them. Right? You know what God loves? People who choose to love Him. Not people that have to love Him. People that choose to love Him. God doesn't want to be your only choice. He wants to be the choice. Amen? Because He is the only good choice. There are a lot of other choices out there. But people who choose Him, what did He say? He said, many are called, few are chosen. Right? There's choosing to it. You know, there's a choosing to all things. How many know Jesus and Adam had to have the exact same opportunities? Yes. And they did. And, and he was put in the middle of it and he said, don't eat of the tree of the good and evil or the tree of life. Oh, he didn't talk about the tree of life. He didn't tell them not to eat of the tree of life. No. So they could have eaten of the tree of life. I have to assume he said you can eat of every tree but this one. But the tree of life was there. Yes. Tree of life, and what does this tree cause? Oh, death. True. So in the garden was life and death. or death. I set before you this day life, death, blessing, cursing, choose life. <laughs> How easy does God make it? Don't eat this one, but I didn't say don't eat this one. <laughs> the one that gives life, didn't mention not eating that one. Don't eat the one that brings death. God gives open book tests. <laughs> How many liked those when you were a kid? And the teacher said, oh, we're having a test today, but it's open book. Glory to God, because that's the only way I'm passing. <laughs> if you guys passed by studying, that's great. Dave did not. He needed the open book, because he played every night and studied no nights. Kids don't listen to that. It's not good advice or good opinion. It's stupid and it's not godly wisdom. <laughs> but thank God for open book test. He gives an open book test. He says, this one will bring death. Don't eat of it. But eat of all the other trees in the garden. Oh, by the way, the tree of life is in the garden. They could have eaten of the tree of life. I wonder why they didn't eat of the, eat of the tree of life. Finally, of course, he had to take them away from the garden because they, they corrupted themselves and they would have eaten of the tree of life and lived corrupt forever. Mm -hmm. What a miserable life. Mm -hmm. But they could have chosen life first. Instead, they chose what was forbidden over what was free. See, that's, that's what temptation will get you. Temptation is what God asked you not to do and will choose it over what God freely gave us. That's what the devil wants us to do. Go on in that, in that chapter right there. Um, well, go to 3, actually. 3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Three, one. The devil comes in, of course, a serpent. 3-1. Three, three, serpent comes in, and what, what is he? Subtle? Yes. He's subtle. Uh huh. More subtle than any beast of the field. Why? So he had the devil. <laughs> and he said to the woman, God said you can eat of every tree of the garden? <laughs> What's he trying to do? He's trying to start a conversation. Don't start a conversation with temptation. Right? <laughs> right? You notice that Jesus didn't start a conversation with temptation? No, no conversation. He ended the conversation. You don't start a conversation with your temptation. <laughs> she starts a conversation. He says, shall, shall, did he say you could eat, you could not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2. The woman said to the servant, so this is where she messed up. She should have said, leave. He said, we can eat of all but this one and we'll not eat of that one. She says, uh, we may eat of, of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Did you guys see where God said, neither shall you touch it? That's the next thing that happens after He'll get you in a conversation. You add to His Word. When you add to His Word, you take the power out of it. God said, don't eat it or you'll die. That's powerful. That, that came from an eternal God and it was born out of love for Adam and Eve. 
And it was a word of power to grace them not to eat that. It wasn't a commandment from God as an enabling, as Brother Moore teaches, to not do it. And he gave them a commandment to not do it, not just so they would have to, oh, I near, well, sure wish I could eat that tree. All the days of my life, I'm going to have to sit there and stare at that tree. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. That tree, that tree, the tree. I wonder how the tree's doing. The dream about the tree, live about the tree. Oh, it's all about the tree. <laughs> he didn't say you shan't touch it. Why did we need to add that in there? Because that took the power out of the Word. It's now not the Word of God. It's the Word of Eve. This is no longer the Word of God because God didn't say neither shall you touch it. Amen? How many know to be tempted you've got to follow the Word of God or to overcome temptation you follow the Word of God. If, you're, if the Word of God just got messed up you have nothing to follow. Now you're following the Word of Eve because He didn't say don't touch it. He did say don't eat it for the day that you eat of it you'll die. Verse 4, And the serpent said to the woman, you shall surely not die. What? That's how this, let's distinguish the devil and God. You shall surely die. You shall surely not die. One of these things just doesn't belong here. <laughs> Go back to Sesame Street. One of these things just isn't the same. The devil is a liar. He is trying to get you to believe a lie and walk off with that as your wisdom. And if your wisdom is not God's wisdom, then you are walking in ignorance, unbelief, and blindness. Amen? I've walked in it. It's a dark place. And what's worse, you think you're okay. You guys have walked in it too. I saw some smiles. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. I'm doing the right thing. You shall surely not die. What's he doing? I got to get, he's, 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 completely contradicting exactly what God says. How easy is it to see this? If you're being tempted and it's completely contrary to the Word of God, run. Don't sit here and listen and carry on a conversation with a liar. A known liar. He was on, <laughs> he was on the earth because he was a liar. And he was full of iniquity. He was cast down. She's having a conversation with him. Verse, verse 5. For God knows. What's, what's he saying now? He's trying to tell her that God just doesn't want her to have it. That God put this temptation in front of her and he just doesn't want her to have it. He's making out that God's her tempter. God, God, does, God knows that you won't die. The day you eat it, not only will you not die, your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know, my mom used to say, I said, Mom, you don't know everything I did. And she goes, I tried not to find out. <laughs> she goes, because I had to pray for you. You don't need to know everything. <laughs> Parents. <laughs> You don't need to know. You know, I know for a fact that Ramsey thinks she's done things I don't know about. And I don't know, but I know she did them. And I'm not trying to find out. <laughs> what am I going to do? Forgive her? Why don't I just forgive her in advance? And we'll be done with that. Hmm. That didn't go over very well. <laughs> you don't need to know everything your kids are doing. Just know know your kids right know your kids well enough to know what's in them there's going to come a time no matter what they're doing you can't help them they're, they're not in your house anymore they're not under your protection anymore and you can do nothing but pray and believe God that what you put in them while they were there is more than enough amen parenting 101 <laughs> Yeah, my mom said, she said, I don't try to find out everything you did. I found out how to pray for you. Thank God she did. Thank God she did. <clears throat> the devil wanted them to think they needed to know everything. God 
let them know everything that they needed to know. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and he, he said, he was, he was right, your eyes shall be open, but he didn't tell them the truth that it'll be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Amen? Because now shame comes in. First thing that comes in is shame and the ability to sin and then total separation from God at one point or another. Didn't happen right away, obviously. He was talking to Cain in the very next chapter. But sin is what separated us slowly and slowly and slowly from God. Amen? And he didn't tell them all that, but temptation doesn't tell you where you're going, where it's taking you. All it wants to do is take you away from God. Why? Because away from God, you, you have no power. Away from God, you're fair game to the enemy. With God, as we, as we walk in His ways, in His will, doing the things, and when the devil comes up, we don't say, He didn't say don't eat and don't touch. We don't add to His words. We grab hold of His word. When, when, when the sickness comes and tempts you, you don't say, you don't add to 1 Peter 2.24. You quote 1 Peter 2.24. And it's more than enough word to overcome any sickness, any disease, anything that would try to get in your body or on you. It's more than enough. You don't need to add to it. Adding to it will take away from it. And it will lose all power. Glory to God. That's not who we are. Jesus is our example. Look at Jesus. Look at Matthew 4. Matthew 4 and verse 18. Matthew 4 and verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made of bread. How many know this isn't a food issue? Temptation is not ever an issue with what you're dealing with. Temptation is a heart issue. Why? He wants to get your heart away from God's will. I need to get your heart to, to have any power in our lives. He's got to get our heart away from God. When your heart is with God, you got all God's goodness in your life. Amen? And so he's trying to get his heart. What? He says, if you be the Son of God, well, what's he doing? He'd have to get him in pride to actually do this because he's, he's actually tempting. He said, if you're the Son of God, make these stones into bread. You know, if he was a nice devil, he'd have just brought him some berries or something, huh? <laughs> he doesn't care whether Jesus is hungry. No. He wants Jesus to fail. And he knows the way to get him to fail is to yield to temptation and go a different... Jesus already had marching orders when he left to go into the wilderness. He didn't need help. This was not godly wisdom. This is, this is the devil trying to get him to fail. How can he fail? Go off of God's plan. In other words, turn these stones into bread. What's he want him? He wants him to use his power for something that is not supposed to be used for. Out of the will of God. Right? Because, you know, Jesus knew that he knew all about manna. He was up there in heaven with God when God was raining manna out of the sky. You reckon Jesus didn't know he could get food anytime he wanted food? He wasn't getting food until it was time to get food. How many know God's got a timing for all things? And Jesus was patient, and because He was patient, He ended up perfect and tired, wanting nothing. You know, he, we, got these people, we get to be like cows, right? And man, you could be, you ever seen cows? They're standing in the greenest part in the whole earth, but yet they'll stick their head through the fence where the barbed wire is, cut themselves to eat this piece of grass that's this big in the middle of all this brown stuff. And they're standing in the green pasture. And that's what temptation is like. He's saying, choose the little patch of grass over the field that you're in. And he gets your focus on this little bitty piece of dirt over here and off 
of the goodness of God and God's plan over here? How can I tempt them to get over and go through the fence? And, and, and you want it so bad that you'll cut yourself up to get it. I've seen, I've been people, I've been the person and I've seen people go so far with their temptation and knowing they're out of the will of God, but they've got so much pride, they don't want to admit it anymore. Well, I know this is what God wants for me. This is what He said to do. I'm going to do it no matter what. Are you? Are you sure? Examine yourself. See if you be in the faith. Because if you got your head through the barbed wire, you ain't eating out of the right field. I don't care if your feet are in the field. <laughs> it don't matter how much of your body's in the field, if you're eating on the other side of the fence, it ain't your side. God says eat here. If you're eating over there, it ain't God's. Amen? <laughs> he said, command these stones to be made bread. First of all, he would have switched gods right there. He would have, because the devil told him. He said, if you be the Son of God, do what I say. See, that's, that's, that's the thing. When we do what the devil says, we now become under his power, because he now becomes the one over us, guiding us. Because he's the, if, if Jesus turns these stones into bread, the devil guided him into doing it because God didn't tell him to do it. People say, the devil don't have no power over me. If, as long as you're turning stones into bread after he says to, then he does. Because you've given it to him. Jesus did not give it to him. Jesus took the perfect word of God in the next verse, the perfect truth, and he said... It's written. And you notice he didn't say anything. God didn't say turn stones into bread, nor touch them. He stayed right on the Word of God, exactly with what it said. It says, it's written, man shall not live. In other words, you're not going to have life by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word is where your life comes from, not bread. And he didn't trade the life of God for the bread of the earth. Temptation tempts you to trade the very life of God for what you can have in your hand right now. God's given us a better way. He's given us a better way. He's put His Spirit in us. He's given us His grace. He's redeemed us and made us to be sons of God. So when the devil talks to us, he could talk to us just like he talked to Jesus. If you be the Son of God, and when he says it, we'll say, yeah, and the Word says this, devil. And you know what? You notice what happened after that? The devil didn't even try it. He said, well, but you're so hungry. There was no more conversation. Why? Because the truth is a conversation ender. When the truth comes in, freedom happens from the devil. What are you free from? Temptation. This is no longer a temptation because you got word on it. Amen? And when we got the word of God and we got the life of God in us, then we live the love of God and we live the life that God has for us and we walk in the godly wisdom and on the paths that He puts us on and we don't stray back and forth. We look unto Him, the author and the finisher of our faith and we walk in the direction that He's got us to walk without swaying. Why? Because you got His Word. And when you're walking down and the devil says, you're sick, and you say, no devil, by whose stripes ye, being me, were healed. And then you don't argue with him. When he says, well, but you don't feel good. You know, what about that pain in your side? What about, you've had a headache for three days. What about, what about, what about? What about I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus and you have no power in my life? Now Go. Amen? We don't, have to, we don't have to settle for His little quick fixes to get us off the path to our real life. 
Every good and perfect gift is from the Father. It comes down from above, from the Father of lights. What's he saying? Everything you'll ever need is in me. And it comes down from me and through me. Don't look for another direction. I've never changed and I never will. I'm good today. I'll be good tomorrow. I got a good plan for you today. I'll have a good plan for you tomorrow. It doesn't matter where you're walking. You're going to come through. It doesn't matter what the devil says here or what the work says here or what the job says there or what the bank says there or what the doctor says there. By me, you'll have your life, you'll have your being, and you will overcome every sickness, every disease, every battle. We are victorious in Jesus Christ. And the temptations to fail will just flee away and will not be drawn away by our own lust, doing our own thing. Yeah, I don't like them. I'm going to go over here. I don't want to do it that way. I don't like cornflakes. I'm having tricks. <laughs> you know, some people eat tricks just to make you mad because they, you wanted them to have cornflakes. <laughs> Some people, we don't want to do things just to be doing them. Don't, don't ever make a decision that's not based on something you know God would want. Amen? God, God gives us His wisdom in our hearts. He gives us His grace, which is the ability to follow Him. The ability, it's, you know, people say, oh, that's that unmerited favor. Yeah, unmerited favor. Unmerited favor to have all His ability in you. He's made us to be like Him in this earth. And just like Jesus overcame temptation, we overcome temptation. And by the, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of His testimony, that's how we overcome. It doesn't matter how the accuser accuses. It doesn't matter how the tempter tempts. We have a greater one in us. We have an ability. We have a love. We have His power, His strength in us. To win every battle. Amen? What's it say in uh, Galatians 5, 16? He says, I say, walk by the Spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What's he saying? Walk by what I put in you, not by what you see around you. Amen? Walk, walk by my Spirit. Walk by my ways. Well, what's in his Spirit? In his Spirit is his mind. In his Spirit is his heart. In His Spirit is His love, it's His joy, it's His peace. In His Spirit is everything you need to walk through, around. You can be in the middle of every temptation in the world and walk right past it with no problem at all looking unto Him. Amen? So I say, we'll walk by the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because when are we drawn away? When by our own lusts. We're drawn away and enticed. So you're drawn away. First he draws you away, and then he entices you. Can't you see that's what he did with Eve? He drew her away from the truth, and then he began to entice her with other ideas other than the ideas of God. How many ideas do you guys want? Huh? Anything beyond God's is double-minded, and a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We're a stable people. Amen. We're stable through the love of God. We're stable through the blood of Jesus. We're stable and able to do all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. I can't, have, I can't even imagine where I'd end that, so we'll stand to our feet today. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We got, we're overcomers. Temptation has, it, it has no power over us. When you got God, temptation is nothing because we're not common. So when the devil, you know, and that's the thing, the devil only has common things to come at you again with you. When he comes against you, it's with common stuff. So when you fight him with the word, you're using an uncommon power to fight a common enemy. He has no chance. He has no chance. I don't know what's going on that's common in your life today, but you have an uncommon power in you to overcome any work of the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sing.